What's poppin' me, gente? You all know who it is, and I'm back with another motherfucking video. Okay, so, I haven't made one of these videos on how to do something in Unity in a while. Mostly because it doesn't seem like there was much demand for it. I made one or two about a year or so ago, but the fact is they took a little bit of time to make. And there really wasn't a lot of positive responses to it. Not many people really seemed interested in me creating a series showing how I'm doing these different things for a 2D game in Unity, which is fine. I understand it completely. But in this particular case, since this is something that is going to allow me to show off what I've completed in the last couple of weeks or so, while simultaneously discussing how to do something that I think could be extremely helpful to anybody else out there who's struggling with setting up a 2D game in Unity, well, I decided why not do it. It kills two birds with one stone. So, I'm going to dive right in. Alright, so what we're primarily going to focus on is setting up the hitboxing for Dracula's second form. And the reason is, Dracula's second form has a very curvy, uneven shape to it. It's not as simple as Dracula 1's first form, where a simple box collider over his head would take care of what we need, similar to what I did here for his face. You know, and that box collider is just moved around with the head to keep it fairly centered. In a position where whenever you hit it, I make sure that the hit's going to register, he's going to take extra damage. Um, his body's now hittable too, but the head takes extra damage. So, I just want to mention that briefly, because I know in my original release, the head was the only thing you can hurt. Well, here you can hurt the body, which makes it so that things like holy water are a lot more useful. But the body takes much less damage than the head does. I think at the moment, I currently have it since the body takes 1 8th damage compared to the head itself. But still, it makes it so that if you can't jump up at a particular moment and hit the face because an attack's coming or you're behind him, you can still score a couple of hits to kind of drain his energy a little more, which gives you more incentive to be more offensive. Much like I did with in the original GM release with Dracula 1, you can hit him as he's teleporting out in the head still, but he takes less damage. It again gives you more incentive to sit there and do something versus just standing there and staring at him waiting, which is aggravating. It just doesn't make the fight as exciting. But I'm digressing here, getting back onto the hitboxing. It's simple enough to do the hitbox of the face, but for the rest of the body, I would have needed a polygonal collider. And here's the problem with a polygonal collider. I would have had to change it each frame to match this body shape, and that just was not feasible. It would have taken forever to do. Um, so instead, I chose to use different box colliders at first. I had about six of them, and they were rotated. They were scaled down to different sizes so that they'd cover his legs, his crotch, his body and his arms but that was also very slow i had to change those every step of the way and it was taking a very long time to get it just right and i just didn't like it so then i looked into something they put in i think about two years ago maybe a little less into unity known as custom physics shapes and what a custom physics shape is you go into the sprite editor select custom physics shapes here and it's kind of hard to see so i'm going to go ahead and change this to black and white and this series of squares and lines right here is the physics shape that basically when you attach a polygonal collider to this particular sprite here it'll tell it what shape to use automatically when that polygonal collider is attached and you can see here i cut it out so that the head's not included so i can make my own separate box collider for that so that it counts as a weak point and the rest of this doesn't um and that sounds pretty easy you just go through each sprite set up your polygonal collider to your custom physics shape pardon me and then you would think, okay, I attach my polygonal collider, and every time the sprite changes, that polygonal collider will change as well. Well, guess what? That's absolutely fucking wrong and not the way it works. Now, that is a planned feature for Unity. In the words of several of the moderators on the forums who, have, who I've asked about it and several other people have asked about it historically as well, that it is, quote, something that is on the roadmap but not planned to be done anytime soon. And they've now been saying that shit for two years. Which is, quite frankly, disgusts me, because this is something very basic that is going to be necessary for anybody who does sprite animation with larger sprites. You're going to need to be able to do this. It's not hard and shouldn't be difficult to code in something that says, hey, update the polygon collider every step when the sprite changes. Not a big deal at all. It really shouldn't be, but they haven't enabled something like this straight out of the box. And I could have, of course, sat around bitching, whining, and moaning like I'm doing right now. Or I could be a motherfucking man like I chose to be get off my ass and try to figure out how to do it myself. But I kid you guys not when I say I was on the forums left and right looking for any kind of thread that had a solution to this issue and I couldn't find a single one. So then I was on the Unity forums doing what I'd like to call my impression of Ugandan fucking knuckles. Do you know the way? Do you know the way, my brother? 
Seriously, that's exactly how I fucking felt. It was horrible. I couldn't get an answer from anybody. Nobody seemed to know how to do it. The best thing they can come up with was some kind of long, programmatic, advanced option where I coded my own little utility and it was like, no, this is something that should come straight out of the box. I'm not looking to spend days and weeks trying to figure something out like this that's pivotal. Hitboxing is a real bitch of a whore to deal with. So I did some more searching on Google and I found some information on the way polygon colliders work. I tried different things, the simple thing like enabling and disabling this, but that just did not work right. It just wasn't going to happen, enabling and disabling this every time the sprite updated. It was causing all kinds of issues. And as you can see here, obviously leaving it the same wasn't going to work every step because, well, while when something's the shape here, like what you just saw with the left arm, that it, it's not changing too much, may not be a big deal. When you're dealing with something that does change shape, and you can see here like the hand change shape of the hitbox is still down here, it's not updating, that is a problem. So, what I instead did was, as I was saying, I looked around on Google, and I actually found a solution that involves using some information from the Polygon Collider itself that's accessible via script. And that is getting a physics shape um, from the individual renderer itself, because that's the first step. I have to read in the renderer, and Dracula has several of them. Dracula's second form part of me has several of them. So I have to look at the renderer. I have to first check for when the sprite changes, but that's not hard to do. You know, when the game starts up, I make a copy of the sprite, and I save it into a variable. I then, each step in the late update, check and see, hey, have one of the renderer's sprites changed from what we previously had saved in that variable? And if so, okay, well, we need to get the physics shape from the current sprite used in the renderer. And then, we need to go ahead in, we need to get, we need to go to our array of colliders, which I also saved each of the polygonal colliders for each individual sprite piece into an array as well, just like the renderers. And then I basically go, okay, take that physics shape and use set path to set it up in the collider so that the collider updates its shape. And then of course, to make sure that we have our sprite array with the current sprite used for each renderer, we have to update that as well. And that's it. And this isn't a solution straight out of the box, I call it. An out of the box solution is simply you click a tick box or it's automatic and it's good to go. But this does work. As you guys are about to see right now when I hit play, you're going to notice that look at the animation for idle and how it's not updating. You see stuff shifting up and down, but that's because the individual object is moving up and down. Look at how the collider itself is in changing shape. Even here, you can see it's pulling left and right because this object, the left arm, is moving. Okay? But it's not changing shape at all. Versus right now, when I hit the play button, focus on the scene view here. And you quickly see that now the Polygon Collider is changing shape every step. And that's it. That's the solution, nice and simple. Something that simple, I couldn't find on the Unity forums. After weeks of asking about it, I couldn't get an answer from a single person. I had to search deep into the bowels of Google it fucking self, into the darkest motherfucking corners of it, to find something that I feel like should be a straight out of the box, basic one-on-one -on -one feature, on an application that has had access to doing 2D objects for several years now. This is part of the reason why sometimes it takes me so long to do something that other people I'm sure are scratching their head on my Patreon page going, what the fuck is so advanced about this? This is basic stuff. What the hell is Esco smoking that is taking this long? Well, this is why. And believe me when I say, when I put a post up on the Unity forum, pop it in there constantly harassing people going, do you know the way? Do you know the way, my brother? And absolutely no fucking body I'm talking not a single motherfucker in the whole place knows the answer. There's more than likely not a way to do it that does not involve either A, coding my own solution from scratch, which is not going to be simple and be very time consuming, or B, paying for some expensive asset at the store. I've come to realize that with Unity. Unlike with Game Maker, where the solution can be right in front of my face, 99% of the time, if I can't find an answer from anybody on the forums, it just doesn't exist. With the exception of maybe something rare and obscure like this. And believe me, if I keep insisting on the forums constantly going, hey, this is a simple thing, it's very basic, it should be something that we could do straight out of the box, well, much like that short, fat, inbred Ugandan little motherfucker, I can expect to get treated like, I'm not even going to ask what the fuck you are, you need to go. You need to go like now. I'm talking straight cancelled. People will definitely be ripping into me and critiquing me and giving me a headache for asking about something that should be bare bones, one on one level shit available to anybody. But once again, I'm digressing. You guys aren't here to see me have a fucking bitch fit. I can do that with a canister of haagen and a bottle of hard liquor after I get off here. Let's show off some more of Dracula 2's animations. 
First, let's move Alucard over a little bit. I'm going to show off a couple of things with the hitboxing first so you guys can see that this shit truly works. So, let's go ahead and do this because now I'm in play mode. The animations, I can actually play each and every one of them. I'm not going to. But it'll actually show you the hitbox updating even without... Because the game's not technically paused. But even from the animation itself, it can do it. And you can see here, the hitboxing is perfectly accurate to what I set up under the sprite sheet. And that makes life a lot simpler for me because now it's just simply a matter of position the sprites, set up the position of the hitbox for the head and everything else is automatically going to be done for me via my script. There was one particular headache I ran into and that's when you don't have a sprite being used for one of these objects that has a collider attached to it. In that case, I had to put in an extra line, which if you go back, rewind the video and look at the script, you'll notice there's a line that says, if the collider's enabled. I had to put that in because if not, I'd get a small error down here. It didn't afford, it didn't affect gameplay, but again, I wanted to make sure it wasn't something that could potentially crash the game, and it's just not a good coding practice to even let errors pop up that you don't think could ever potentially harm anything. You'd be surprised how somewhere, somebody's system will be having a fucking meltdown just because of that little bug that won't affect anybody else on the planet, and it's just aggravating. Okay, so, next up, I'm going to show you a couple of the animations here. Let's zoom into the actual game view. And you can see his jump animation there, obviously. Nothing too fancy. It's got two parts to it. That's the jumping upward part. His old fireball animation now has lighting on it. It actually plays every time because I'm going from an animation here. It doesn't function perfectly. If I was to actually set it up over here to be active, it would. Let's go mute that audio. That's going to get annoying really fast. Gigavolt, which without the effect, isn't very interesting to look at. So let's go ahead and go to the charge up effect. Actually, I got a better idea because I have this animation set to not loop here, and this video is already getting a little long. So let's go ahead and do this. Layer default state. Okay, now he's locked in. Let's go ahead and briefly pause the game. So otherwise, because otherwise this thing's gonna immediately fire off as soon as I put it in here. Also, let me say credit goes to Mitri for this amazing effect. Didn't hell of a job with it. This isn't going to be perfectly centered because I haven't coded it in yet to be spawned when he goes into this animation, but you guys will get the idea. Keep your view up here on the game view. I'm going to go ahead and go to full screen mode as well and unmute the audio. Alucard might actually take some damage here if I don't move him back a bit, so I move him slightly because this has a pretty big blast radius. Alright, so that's Gigavolt right there. Let's move on to something else. And that's going to be his Firestorm animation, which I showed this off in a GIF approximately a year and change ago, but now it's actually in-game, broken up into three parts. Which, of course, the initial startup after he sucks in. If you remember the original release in GM, he would suck in for a long time. He would hop back to one side of the screen, suck in, and then begin shooting these shockwaves that I said were a temporary placeholder. They were these purple fireballs that exploded upward. And they kept, he shot them out in waves. It was really difficult to dodge, a little unbalanced. And like I said, it was just a placeholder at the time because I didn't have any new animations for him. So instead, I came up with an attack where he basically still does the sucking part, but then he points his mouth up towards the sky and begins spewing fireballs from it. And again, I'm just going to show you his animation briefly in game here. I haven't coded in the fireballs or the physics for that just yet. Just a brief preview. That's the first part of it. It would be the second part, and again, you have actual ambient lighting in his mouth there, along with a sprite to give it that extra effect. Credit again goes to Mitri for the amazing sprite. And then the last part is nothing major to see there, where he just goes back to idle. Nothing else to much to really say there, but you can see there's a lot of new sprites in here already for this guy. If we examine his sheet a little more closely here, you can see there's a lot of new little bits and pieces in here. And I'd honestly like to give him more attacks, but that's not something that's on the agenda right now. That's something that would come later down the line in the life of the project, depending on the funding I'm getting, because getting him sprited is pricey since he's large and it takes quite a bit of time and effort to get him just right. But that's all I really want to show you guys this week. Just a quick preview here, I really don't want this video to drag on past the 10-15 minute mark, because I tend to start talking here, and then I digress because I get so excited about stuff, so today I'm trying to stay on topic. But for any of you who are having trouble setting up hitboxing, hopefully that little script, you know, will come in handy. I mean, it's only a couple of lines long. Let me show you, actually, you know what, let's pop back into that script briefly and let me show you the topmost part of it, where the declarations are made, just because I know for some people that makes it easier to figure out what's going on. 
And here you can see the only things you need to worry about here are Rend, Sprite, Cull, which are just arrays. You know, again, we hold the renderer and the collider, the polygon collider for each object that uses one in Dracula 2. That's all this is doing. If we look up here at the script, you can see I just saved this five of each, you know, five renderers, five colliders for five different objects. And then of course the sprite array is just as soon as this object is created, it's going, okay, for these five objects, what are the default sprites in them? Let me save them here because this way every step when it compares the sprites, it knows, okay, the sprites changed. Let's check the collider is enabled. Okay, get the physics shape from that particular sprite, update the collider, update what sprite we have saved in the sprite array so we know when we change it again, and that's it. If the sprite's not different or the collider's not enabled, well, this doesn't need to run. It's irrelevant. The next time the sprite change, it'll again keep checking because the sprites change, but not a big deal there. I could possibly move this line down to here to make it to not keep checking the sprite, but that's not a good idea because that could potentially be a point where the same sprite is in one of his animations and the collider is temporarily disabled and then re-enabled and that could potentially cause an issue. So I'm going to leave it as is here but hopefully this script will come in handy for somebody else out there who's struggling with this issue because I know how much of a headache Unity can be at times and how with, yeah, amazingly bloated it is with a million ways to do some things. There are other things that it just seems like there's no intuitive way to do them. Alright so that's all I want to show off today. The next time I show off Dracula's first two forms in the prologue. It'll be with the AI and all the attack coded in so you can see how everything flows together as they duel to the death with either Legacy Richter or Alucard. Um, beside that, I'm going to be working on the prologue stage itself some this week as I got some more changes to make there and the title screen as well. I'm trying to get this done as soon as possible so I can get an alpha out to all of my loyal Patreon supporters. For those who didn't see another video that I put up, I did state that I am going to put out the alpha releases first to the Patreon supporters and then everybody else will get it afterwards. And that's not going to change for the moment. If you're not a Patreon supporter, go join right now. If you want to leave feedback, ask questions, if there's something in this video that wasn't clear, Patreon is the place to do it. For those of you that are seeing this on YouTube, I appreciate the support and the love. I hope you like what you're seeing. But the bottom line is, I just don't get back to YouTube comments. I don't have the time for it. Uh, if you want to do a one-time donation, you can do that via PayPal as well. The link will be in the comments down below of this video. If you want to join the Facebook group, if you want to join the forums themselves, by all means, links will be down below. All right, so that's it. This video has gone on longer than I wanted to. I think we're going on about 20 minutes. You know, again, with what's going on out there in the world, I hope everybody's staying safe. Power through this difficult time if it's a rough patch for you. And always remember, it's not a bad life. It's just a bad day. You could do this. Thanks again for all the support. Deuces. He asks who can we be? We will find a way, find a way, find a way. But uh, suck my dick. Kira kara hara ba. No! None of that! Shame on you! No, seriously. That meme is deader than Pokimane's YouTube career is gonna be now that Leafy's decided to get up in that ass. I'm talking straight up in bomb, thrown in the motherfucking casket with the casket dropped out in the middle of the sea into the Marianas Trench with boulders attached to it. Gone. Finished. Done. Dead. Oh! Motherfucker.